What happens to the kids that are trapped in trapped? What happens to the kids that are trapped in trapped? No, seriously. What happened to the kids that are trapped in trapped? Oh my god. What does happen to them? Okay, so in the late 2000s, there was a CBBC game show called Trapped, which involved a bunch of kids going floor by floor on this really creepy tower. And each time one of them was voted out or they lost a challenge, they were trapped on the floor. So what happened to the kids that were trapped? Are they still there? Hi everyone, welcome back. So if you watch my videos all the way to the end, which you totally should, by the way, you'll know that I always ask for recommendations of what to cover next on the channel. And after making my videos on Raven and Bamzuki, I got several requests to cover another CBBC game show called Trapped. And of course, I like to give the people what they want. Well, after I've spent several months talking about Nickelodeon. But today I thought, you know what? Maybe I will make the video on Trapped that people have been asking for. So I'm happy to announce that this is part one of a 10 part series on the Night Shift episode of Spongebob. Buckle up, because this is going to take the rest of the year. Oh wait, no, this is about Trapped. So much like Raven, Trapped is one of those game shows with a backstory and a fictional element to it. Except this time, instead of contestants being visitors to a creepy Tolkien-like world, contestants are instead visitors to a creepy Gothic-type tower. Which really drives home the idea that 2000 CBBC was mostly about scaring children. The idea is that the contestants start at the top of the tower and attempt to work their way down floor by floor, completely completing a new challenge each time, until ultimately they win by escaping from the bottom of the tower. The catch being that on each floor, one contestant has to be left behind, and anybody that doesn't make it out of the tower is trapped. Like the name of the show. The whole time they descend through the tower, they remain under the watchful eye of the caretaker, who provides backstory, narration, and helpful tips for people on the show. And he looks like this. Oh, there's something important about to date, but I've missed lost me calendar. Feeding the Jub Jubs, no. Being released from the tower, I wish. <gasps> it's Wily Snake's birthday! He's 128! Well, in tower years. At whatever age I was when I first saw this show, this was my first introduction to the concept of ear stretchers. And let me just say, I was not a fan. Beyond the whole idea of, you know, kids being trapped forever in a gothic tower because they failed a challenge on a CBBC game show, I gotta say that this guy was probably the scariest thing on the show. But I did find something really interesting out while researching him, which is that the actor that plays him is also the compare the meerkat guy. That will mean nothing to you if you're from outside of the UK, but trust me when I tell you that that's a pretty interesting fact. So for each challenge, the contestants have to work together to solve some puzzle or complete some physical task. But there is another catch, which is that they all have these gigantic earpieces hanging off the side of their 10 year old heads. And at the start of each round, one of the contestants is selected to be the saboteur, which means it's their job to make sure that all the other kids fail the challenge without being caught. And the way they pick the saboteur is by having this woman's voice yell into their ears saying, Do not react, you are the saboteur. And they have to try and play it cool. Which, if you want a 10 year old to try and be subtle about something, this probably isn't the best way to go about it. I honestly wonder how many times when filming this they had to reset because one of the contestants immediately blew the secret. What? I'm the saboteur? Nice! So I thought to best explain the show, why don't we just go through an episode that I found online. So the first challenge involves these kids passing fake snow around across these stepping stones to fill up a goblet. And to pass the challenge, they need to have the goblet full by the end of the time limit. But every time they step off the stones, the goblet empties automatically. Ellie, do not react. You are the saboteur. Ellie, she said do not react. I saw those eyes move. What the hell is wrong with you? So in this first challenge, Ellie's got to be the one to do the sabotaging, and the voice tries to guide her through. But I still watch this and think, how is it not immediately obvious who the saboteur was? Try spinning the snow when you're passing it. Excellent. Oops. I dropped it. So this time around, Ellie is successful and the group ends up failing the challenge. If they had passed the challenge, it would have meant that Ellie would have been automatically trapped on the floor. But since they failed, everybody now has to vote on who they thought the saboteur was, and that person gets trapped instead. You must now vote for who you think the saboteur was and why. Georgia, who do you think the saboteur was? I think the saboteur is Andrew because I've seen him step down from the eggs blocks a couple of times. Camille. 
I think the saboteur was Andrew, because when I, whenever I looked, Andrew was the only one moving. And the worst part is that Andrew wasn't even stepping off deliberately. He was just so bad at the challenge that he kept falling off. Ellie. I think the saboteur was Zach, because I've seen him putting his foot on the floor quite a few times. Andrew. I also think it was Zach, because I saw him put his foot down on the ice a couple of times. Jessica. I think it was Zach as well, because I saw him put his foot down a couple of times. Okay, actually, I guess I don't really feel sorry for Andrew anymore. I feel sorry for Zach. I like how as soon as one of them voted for him, all of the rest of them just immediately turn on him, and because he's the last one to vote, he just has to sit there and take it. Zach. I think the saboteur was Ellie, because she, I saw her put her foot down a couple of times. And to make matters worse, he's the only one that actually gets it right. Even though Ellie literally poured out snow in front of somebody's face. Zach, how do you feel about being trapped? I'm a little bit upset, but it was fun while it lasted. Poor unfortunate Zach. You're trapped! <laughs> Zack really needs some acting lessons. Ah, I'm trapped forever. Oh no. Also, can I just say, I don't know why, but the CGI really, really reminds me of Shark Boy and Lava Girl. So the next challenge they do is kind of a weird one. It's basically a pattern spotting game where they see fairies on a TV screen and they have to decide if they're good or bad. And of course the saboteur's job is to have them make the wrong decision. But relying on young kids to use their improvisational skills really doesn't work. And so what you end up with is just the most obvious saboteur ever. Oh, she's got a blue flower. Convince them to release her. It looks a bit bad. It kind of looks like it's angry. Looks like. Think of a reason to change their minds, Georgia. It's, it's looking at we are like a wings flutter. It, like the bottom of it, it looks like there's like lightning coming out of it. Yeah, and, and, and like the, the wings and, and like the, the smile and stuff, you know, and I don't know, guys. I think we should let this one go. I go I think she looks good. I think she's bad as well. I think she's bad. Ah, uh, convince the boys. I'm bad. Right, 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 are we all agreeing on bad? Yeah. I like how even after being told that, Georgia doesn't say a word to the boys. She doesn't want to speak to boys. Are you kidding? So Georgia obviously fails the challenge after being incredibly obvious the whole time. You have passed. Therefore, the saboteur is automatically locked in the room. But before I reveal the unlucky unfortunate, who do you think the saboteur was and why? Yeah, you know, the saboteur failed the challenge, so there's technically no point in humiliating them further by having a vote. But, I don't know, how about we just have one anyway? Camille. I think the saboteur was Georgia, because for two of the fairies, she said the wrong answer. Ellie. I think the saboteur was Georgia, because every time we said one thing, she said the opposite. Andrew. I also think it was Georgia, because she was always the one who, who had the first answer. Jessica. Georgia, because she kept disagreeing with us. Um, I, th I think it was Andrew, because I, I don't like him. Also, something else kind of dumb that I realised while watching this. Is this basically just 2008 Among Us? So on to the next floor, and immediately after I criticised Georgia for not being a very good liar, they have another challenge that's also based entirely around lying to people. This time the team play a game of true or false with animal facts, and the saboteur has to convince them to give the wrong answer. Andrew is the saboteur for this one, and he actually does succeed, but to be honest, I'm not really convinced it was because he did a good job, and more just because nobody really knew the answers to the animal facts anyway. So with only three people remaining, the contestants go to the penultimate floor in the tower. And I just want to show you the introduction to this one. Floor three, Camp Fear! It's your chance if you dare. To pass this challenge, the unfortunates must find nine pieces of wood and assemble the campfire. Once built, they must take shelter and rest. But beware, if someone puts the fire out, the moon howler will appear. They must keep the beast at bay and quickly build the fire in time! Okay, so, what? And let me just stress, 
the fuck? Okay, the caretaker, I can live with that. He's a bit weird, but he saves me money on my car insurance. Being trapped in the tower forever? That's fine too. Kids die all the time on British game shows. Presumably. But I draw the line at whatever this thing is. It's kind of like they went down to the production of Cats and asked, do you have any costumes that we can borrow? And they said, well, we tried to make this one, but it got a bit fucked up along the way. And they said, perfect, we'll take it. You know, I would have loved to go on Raven and I would have gone on Banzuki too but I would have never gone on Trapped, and it was mostly for shit like this. But this challenge is similar to a number of challenges over the course of the series, because they're all very easy to sabotage. The basic format being that the team have to try and build something up, and the saboteur has a limited amount of time to try and knock it down, but if they're caught outside of the time limit, then they'll just be seen by the others immediately. Ellie ends up being the saboteur again, and actually does get voted out this time, leading to Camille and Andrew advancing to the final round. The final round is basically a head-to-head head quiz where the two contestants have to answer questions on various things that happened over the course of the episode with whoever gets the most questions right winning the key to their freedom and escaping the tower which honestly for a final round is pretty boring i guess unlike raven which had the same group of kids over multiple episodes the fact that trapped had one group of kids per episode probably necessitated a really quick ending but the fact that the show just ends with a quiz is pretty anticlimactic and also pretty bad because the two of them are just terrible at answering questions. Andrew, which unfortunate was the saboteur on floor four? Ellie. Incorrect, Andrew. It was Andrew. It was you. How could you forget that? So the final round and the episode is won by Camille. Despite nothing really interesting ever happening to him. I mean, I didn't even mention him up until now. So I guess the tactic for winning Trapped is to just fly under the radar? Andrew, how do you feel about being trapped? I feel very disappointed that I'm stuck here for the rest of my life. That's my favourite line in the entire episode. The deadpan expression just sells it. Yeah, you know, won't see my family again kind of sucks. Probably will starve in here, that sucks too. But at least I gotta be on TV. You know, a lot of the kids that go on these sorts of shows are acting kids. Like they go to theatre classes at the weekends and stuff like that. But I'm convinced by the absolute deadpan monologues of all of these kids that the people that go on Trapped are not that. So at the end of the episode, Camille leaves the tower and gets to go free. But unlike Raven or Bamzuki, you never see the contestants get any sort of prizes or anything. So I guess the prize is just his freedom, which kind of sucks. But that was my look at the CBBC show Trapped. As far as these fantasy CBBC game shows go, I definitely prefer Raven. I think the concept is a lot cooler and the show as a whole is much higher quality. But honestly, Trapped wasn't too bad. I never watched a huge amount of it growing up, so I'm not really like a Trapped mega fan or anything, but I did think the design of some of the challenges was pretty cool. Although, of course, the thing that always put me off about Trapped was the whole idea of being trapped forever. I can't do that. I've got things to do. I guess also from a game show perspective, Trapped isn't really that good because it just seems like so much of what happens is entirely determined by luck. Like you can just get selected as the saboteur in the first round and get a really difficult challenge and you're out without ever really having done anything. But you know, I think despite that, it's still a good concept and a fun show. But with that, I hope you've enjoyed hearing me talk about the third British kids game show on this channel. You can see the other ones somewhere. As always, if there's something you'd like me to cover next, please let me know and I'll see you next time.